the village of Bedley, Oxfordshire, home to a few hundred human beings and several million common or garden snails. Some quality of soil lures them here. Some aphrodisiac in the beds keeps them reproducing. They can eat an average-sized garden at one sitting. They arrive at night without warning in packs of several thousand and inch their way from east to west like a murder squad looking for scraps of clothing, meticulously passing all vegetation through rapacious digestive systems, supposedly. Prayers are said. Women light candles, men sterilize and destroy. The day will come when the villagers give up their lands and flee. Until the revolution, the snails must wait, dodging the daily trials and persecution at the hands of gardeners like my father. At Home with the Snails, written by Gerard Foster, starring Geoffrey Palmer and Angela Thorne. I never liked the way they hung round corners in big groups, but now they're taking over. I had one crawling along the counter just above the fudge salutes. The vicar's mother pointed it out, said that looks very real. I couldn't tell her it was real. I panicked, said it was a special edition. She said, how much? I said, £3.50. She said, I'll take it. Half an hour later, I had the vicar in making all sorts of wild threats. I, mean, I can really do without that sort of stress when I'm trying to run an honest business. So I told him to piss off. And you can see how these things spiral out of control. He's writing to environmental health. They could shut me down. I don't like to see my son suffer. I mean, he's not suffering. He loves sliding around in his little shed with his little friends. Removing him to a secure mental unit would be the cruelest thing we could do. And I haven't quite finished the book. I'm not getting away scot-free. My roses are taking a right hammering. Can't believe I'm standing spade in hand at two o'clock in the morning waiting for snails. I believe God has given me a talent. I mean, everyone has a talent, but a lot of people's talents seem to be for, well, easy things, like working at a checkout. Mind you, the speed with which they find the barcode and beep, 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 oh, it's very clever. But, of course, my talent is for making nice things. And that's why I'm here on... Bedley Hospice FM. Every cloud has a silver lining. This is the Beverly Fisher Show. My name is Beverly Fisher, and I hope you're all very well. Well, you're not. You're ill, but here's something that'll make you better. Well, I suppose my grape sculptures won't actually make you better, but they will make you feel better. I know they make me feel better. Unwanted grapes are such a burden on NHS fruit bowls. There was a whole bunch of them wandering round the church the other day. What? Grapes? No snails. Oh, keep up, George. They were all over the cross. His hair looked like it hadn't been washed for days. Yeah, something's got to be done. Ooh, she speaks. Well, you asked me to dinner. You didn't say I had to talk. Well, that's how we do things in this family. We don't sit in front of the goggle box. We eat and we talk. They say it might be a curse. It's not a curse. There's so much ignorance about snails in this village. Yeah, people don't realise how dangerous they are. I mean, my livelihood is at risk and no-one seems to care. Where's the community when you need them? Well, if you'd spent the afternoon doing grape sculptures on hospice radio, they might rally round. You only get back what you put in. That's not a very good deal. What about you, Alex? You have a talent for living in a shed. Come to the hospice. Give a little talk on snails. Mum, I can see through your attempts to get me to do something constructive with my life. Can I do a talk on why we should get rid of all the snails? Yes. All right, I'll do one. Yeah, because I said I'd do one. That is so childish. Is not. Is. Is not. Ooh. This looks like war. The war of the snails. Hospice radio was really good. Ratings dipped in the second half due to death and tiredness. Rose is distributing leaflets and holding public meetings. I'm branching out into schools, old people's homes, captive audiences. Hello, Bedley Prison. Should I wait for other people? Nah, I don't think anyone else is interested in nails, mate. Snails. Oh, right. Shall I carry on? Yeah, if you want. Right. Um, well, I'd like to start this afternoon's lecture by addressing some of the common myths about snails. Number one, snails are dirty. Untrue. I myself regularly bathe in snail saliva, and I find... Are you a student? George, are you really going to stand there all night, waving a spade around? Will you be quiet? You'll frighten them away. I thought you wanted them frightened away. Shut up, or you'll wake Alex. And I'm trying to sleep. Sorry. What's the spade for? 
Well, if you're not going to take them in, I have to protect my ruses. I haven't got room. I've got 2,000 snails in there. They're all over me. It's nice, but I keep rolling over and crushing them. What was that? Oh, sounds like there's thousands of them. I can, I can see a shape. They're moving in a column. <laughs> Come on, you bastards! Oh, 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 hey, 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 get oh, on now! Alex! Do you know this bloke, Alex? Yes, my dad. And you're in my garden. Can you let go, please? All right, sorry. Oh, this is Gary from the prison. I got out yesterday. I've, I've already had a row with me mum. I was wondering if I could keep in a spare room or something. No. Sorry. <sighs> sorry. It's the stress. Oh, your book. No. It's having that animal in the shed. He liked my lasagna. <laughs> so would I, if I'd been on prison food for the last five years. What do we know about him? I've read Oliver Twist. So? Criminals aren't born, they're made. I'll bet Gary was brought up in a house with three televisions and no books. Of course he's going to go out and steal. What? Books? No, more televisions. They get hooked. <sighs> you saw at dinner how he kept looking wistfully over at the television as if our conversation was almost painful to him. He's planning to nick it. You never see the potential in people, do you? Oh, you're not going to try and change him? Well, if Bill Sykes had read Oliver Twist, it would have been a different story. It started out like Schindler's List, you know, just a record of how many I saved from the garden. Then I started noting details, trail patterns, size of tentacles, how often they have sex, who with, how long for, what position. I'll show you the photos after dinner. Yeah? They, were, they are interesting, aren't they, snails? Right, I've got lettuce, porridge oats and cuttlefish bones. Oh, look, your mum's invited me to dinner with them. Oh, right. Well, have a nice time. Oh, do ask for more. You're not in the workhouse now, you know. You ain't got any red sauce, have you? Red currant sauce? No, ketchup. With pork stroganoff? Yes. Sorry, it just gives it a bit of flavour. So. Oh. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's allowed to have ketchup, and I'm not. Don't make a scene, George. Mm. So, um... What's the big deal with Alex and them snails, then? Let's talk about you, Gary. Yes. What was it you do again? I'm a gardener. No. What's your job? What were you in prison for? All right, burglary. Seen anything you fancy? George. TV? Video? We don't blame you, Gary. We blame your mother. What about the microwave? No, it's not the latest model. Probably wouldn't be worth me while. Well, don't let us keep you now you've cased the joint. George, stop it. No, no, it's all right. I'll, I'll go. No, eat your dinner. No. I'll, uh... I'll go now. Yes. Nothing very interesting for you here. Well, I am quite interested in your roses. Well, you'll keep away from them. I wouldn't want to nick them. I was just wondering how you got them so small. You what? You... Oh, you're the gardener. The gardener from Bedley Prison? Yeah. Oh. Do you never, like, think there's more to life than collecting snails in your dad's garden? Oh, yeah. I'm interested in exotic ones as well. But I've got this book here. Right, this is the top snail, the Potipopiagus antipodarum. It can fertilise itself. You know what that means? Yeah, yeah, it cracks one off the wrist and gets pregnant. It'd be amazing, wouldn't it? It'd be a bit inconvenient. I'm getting one for my 24th birthday, actually, next week. My mum's ordered it from New Zealand. I'm 24, next Tuesday. Same here, Tuesday. We're like twins. We were born on the same day. Yeah. And we both like snails. Yeah. I'd heard all the rumours about the prison garden. We all had. Roses wider than a ruler with petals the size of prawn crackers. Didn't believe a word of it. How could a bunch of thugs produce such beautiful things? <laughs> but more in common with snails than roses. That's why Alex has taken this Gary into his shed. It's just another snail. Slow, a social pest. Breaks into people's land for a living. Probably brought up in a shell suit. It's a juicy chapter. I should cultivate Gary. But I'll look after my own roses. Thank you. Gotcha. So, books are about people. Even Animal Farm is about people. But don't try and get your head round that. We'll be doing allegory next time. Right. And some books are about people like you. And what's people like me? The working class. Criminals. Take Oliver Twist. Now, you might have seen the film. Yeah, yeah. You've got to pick a pocket or two. Yes, I have. Yeah. Old Fagin sending his little boys out onto the streets of London. That's the acceptable face of crime. But there is also a very nasty man called Bill Sykes, who beats up women and has a very ugly dog. And he dies. Right. 
So, has that helped? What? Well, now you know what happened to Bill Sykes. Do you think you will ever want to commit a crime again? Alex, glad you could come. Well, I wanted to see what you'd say. I've read these leaflets. Glossy, aren't they? This is lies. Blaming the snails for spreading disease. I've got a serious heart condition. They're making it worse. That was one snail. Yeah, so what sort of damage are thousands of them going to do? It's going to spiral out of control. Look, Rose, I'm sorry about your shock, but I just get the feeling you're using this snail business to mask your own insecurities. No, I don't have insecurities. Oh, here we go. Music, please. Threatening our business, they're mixing with your children. So what do we do? We say prayers, we lay a few traps, we creep through flower beds late at night like we're the criminals. The church won't get rid of the snails, the church is full of snails. <laughs> the garden centre won't get rid of the snails, the more snails there are, the more overpriced products they can foist upon us. There is a solution. The Ministry of Agriculture has approved the use of military aircraft to cover Bedley and the surrounding area with metaldehyde 41. It attacks the mucus producing cells in snails and produces death by desiccation. Let us take up arms against this alien aggressor. Let us engulf our village in a cleansing fog. Let us spray! Yeah! So, Lawrence makes us see that class shouldn't stop us from making love if we want to. Well, not us, obviously. I couldn't bear to be touched by a man with tattoos. So you have read this one? Oh, I think so. Oh, one doesn't need to read the classics, just know them well enough to talk about at parties. Half the books in this room I probably never read. Yeah, yeah, they do that in pubs, buying a job lot of books just to look good. Well, that's not the same. Some of these are first editions. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Gary. And Alex, happy birthday to you. Oh, it's a wonderful coincidence. So, Jane Austen. Oh, sorry, Gary. Happy birthday. Oh, thanks. For you to read on your own. Aesop's Fables. Little stories, big letters. Oh, Alex, your present got sent on to Moscow by mistake, but I know you like something to unwrap on your birthday. Oh, thanks, Mum. There's nothing in it. I didn't have time. Gary, what were you saying about my roses looking a bit here? Now, Gary, were you born in Oxford General? Uh, yeah, I was. As was Alex. Uh, I was talking about my roses. So, I must have met your mother. Now, there was a very nice lady I had a running joke with about nappies and Jackson Pollocks. No, so that can't have been her. Uh, there was a woman who knitted... Oh, but you people don't wear wool, do you? Oh, I suppose I wouldn't have met her if she was in the TV room the whole time. Yeah, look, I'll ask her. I'm, I'm supposed to be going round hers for my birthday tea, as it happens. Oh, uh, this is all homemade. Yeah, yeah, but I'm hoping she's going to take me back in, though, so... Uh, well, thanks very much for having me. Yeah, we me. can't let you go. It's not safe. We haven't done the Brontes. Well, there's not much room in a shed. Have Alex's room. What if I want to move back in? You don't. Fancy a stroll round the garden, Gary? It's very easy to laugh at human beings fighting against adversity. Well, I find it easy. Not people starving in Africa, that's gone beyond a joke now. But it's great seeing villages flooded, plucky Brits canoeing down their high street. Found their dream home by the river, then looked out and saw the Volvo floating past the front window. It's funny because it's happening to someone else. Well, I'm on TV now. I was that person paddling through a river of snails on the six o'clock news. Well, beating my way through with a spade. And when it happens to you... All your cynicism, all your irony disappears. It's you fighting for the right to walk down your street. In our case, you can walk down the street. We did have to ship in a few more snails to make the pictures more dramatic, but it's the principle. We don't want to get known as that village that's full of snails. <laughs> Americans! I could make a mint. A mint in the shape of a snail. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Snail Land. Uh, two more pints, please. Large ones. So, what? The roses in the prison. They're bigger than yours. And? And they smell nicer, too. Yours are a little bit rank, George. Yes, all right. What's the trick? Oh, I can't think, George. I know, it's difficult. 
My mind is a vacuum. Oh, please, try. <laughs> Get us a pair of whiskey chasers and it may start coming back to me. <sighs> right. He said how about some birthday drinks? Not to me, to Gary. Which was a relief. Obviously I don't want to spend my birthday with my father. Wouldn't have minded spending it with Gary. He's my phantom twin. I suppose that's why my parents like him. He's what they could have had. He's made something of himself. He's made a criminal of himself. At least he's done something. I'm the man who does nothing. Tomorrow there's a meeting to decide whether to exterminate every snail in the village and what am I, number one snail fan, doing about it? Nothing. Why? Because I'm a snail myself. And what does a snail do when all the other snails are in trouble? It curls into a shell and pretends it's not there. Might as well not be there for all the nothing I do. I'm really not bitter about the drinks. Didn't fancy hanging round the house with Alex. Not on his birthday. He gets very depressed. So do I. It's generally a very depressing day. So I've come to do a bit of praying against this curse. Not that it's my fault. I've tried to be a good mother with the children I've got, and I'm doing sterling work with Gary. I keep having this thought that something happened in the hospital, that there was a, a mix-up with the cots, and Alex is really Gary, and Gary is really Alex. Be a wonderful plot development, wouldn't it? Sad for Alex. There's something about Gary underneath the tattoos. I'm sure he understands more than we think. One of them says, I love Mum. I keep wanting to say, It's me, Gary. I'm your Mum. If you're still there, God, give me a sign. Let me know if I'm on the right track. His hair looks a lot better. <laughs> Come on, Gary, I'm going to be pissed at this rate. Two more jugs, please. It's a secret, Mr. Fisher. Well, I'm not going to tell anyone. I'm not stupid. I don't go blurting out secrets. Yeah? I, I could tell you secrets, Gary. I've got secrets. And it's hard. You want to unburden yourself. Oh, you do, yeah. yeah you, you want to let it all out. Oh, yeah, you do, yeah. <laughs> let it all flood out. What is it, George? Come on. I'm spying on him. <laughs> I'm spying on my own son. I'm, I'm writing a book about his snail thing. <laughs> It's brilliant. It will destroy him. Right. I'm a wicked man, Gary. <laughs> Tell me I'm wicked. Oh, you're not wicked, George. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. The roses. How do you do it? What do you do about all the snails? Snails? Baits. Traps. How did you kill them in the prison? I didn't. What? You let them run free? No. There are no snails in Bedley Prison. No snails. Well, they can't get in, can they? They can't get over the walls. So, if I get rid of all the snails... Oh, my God. It's all right, it's all right boss. I'll, I'll take him home. No harm done. Oh, listen, listen. Where, where'd you get all your books? Ladies and gentlemen. Go, Rose! Ladies and gentlemen. Last week... Murderer. Go! Shut up, Alex. Go, Rose. Shut up, Mum. Murderer. You're all murderers. Yeah, well, I'm not going to stand around and do nothing while you destroy lives. You vote for this spray and... I will leave this village forever. <laughs> I mean it. I will go. Go, Alex. I mean... <laughs> Sit down, you prat. Last week, I proposed the use of Mertaldehyde 41 to eradicate this village of its snail population. <laughs> These snails are not a curse from God, they're a gift. Yes. I have a dream of snail land. A land where humans and snails live side by side in peace. And tourists from all over the world come to buy a piece of that dream. No. We could turn this quaint little village into a giant snail park. Forget roses. You'll have money for as many plastic roses as you like. <laughs> I am the father of these two individuals. Go, George! And the husband of this woman. In 1979, a colleague of mine at Oxford University created the formula for metaldehyde 41. He needed somewhere to test it. 
The following Sunday was a warm, sunny day, so naturally the children were allowed to play with the windows open. I don't know whether my children were exposed to the spray, but one is a money-obsessed social incompetent with a serious heart condition. The other is some kind of half-man, half-snail freak. Even worse, the snails were back within a couple of months. It really didn't do any good. Citizens of Bedley, if you want your children to grow up healthy and normal, think long and hard before you vote for this spray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great speech. Yes. Can't believe it didn't do any good. They care more about their roses than their own kids. Yeah, unbelievable. Is that why I'm messed up, then, because of the spray? Oh, that? No, I made all that up on the spot. You're not messed up. And if you are, I was hardly over there, so it can't be my fault. Why did you say all that stuff? Well, it, you said you'd leave if they killed all the snails. Yeah, I suppose I'm going to have to now. No. You stay in the shed. We'll find you some more snails from somewhere. I don't want to be a freak. You're not a freak. You're eccentric. But I wouldn't have you any other way. Thanks, Dad. I'm in the conservatory, Mrs. F. How did it go? Oh, Alex, Rose, George, they all joined together on the same side and lost. Oh, you're back. And now I'm losing you. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Thanks for everything, Mrs. Fisher. I... Oh, call me. Do you know the Prince and the Pauper, Gary? Well, my mum's waiting up. It's wonderful, Gary. Two boys change places. I, I haven't read it, but uh, there might be a sign. It's round here. I don't know what that is. Oh, never heard of that. Oh, Gary. Oh. What's that? A camel called Hump by William Braintree. The Franks family tree by Colonel M. Franks. Who's William Braintree? Who's Colonel M. Franks? I don't know. Nor do I. So what are they doing on my bookshelf? It's Gary. Got more than my parents, have you? Um, I'm off. You're not interested in snails, are you? Look, there's three and a half grand there. I've sold your mum's books and replaced them with cheap stuff they put in pubs. It's for you to go around the world. Why would I want to do that? I'll give you three and a half grand and you're too busy having a middle class breakdown to say thank you. Your snails are going to die, mate. Well, my dad says he'll get me some more. Oh, yeah. And about your dad. You ought to read this. You fascists! What about my special edition snails? You're killing me! I've got a serious heart condition! I won't have them in the house. Other poems. Keith, someone. Oh, My Pleasant Childhood, Philippa Vanity Press. Book rage, they call it. I read about it in a magazine. A woman in Waterstones asked for Madame Bovary and they tried to fob her off with Chocolat by Joanne Harris. Burn. Bad books. Burn. Oh! Help! George! George! Are you there? Are you there, Dad? Are you in your car, listening on your microphones? My snails are all right. I've, I've bunged up all the holes in the roof and the gap under the door. I've saved my snails, Dad. You're proud, You're proud of, me. of me. Sorry I've turned out such a bad gardener. You did your best. All those nights when I was a boy, down in the flower bed, stamping on them or slicing them in two. Well, there were right ways of killing them and wrong ways, yeah? Never put them on a fire, you said. They whistle like they don't care. You didn't like that. You wanted them to suffer for what they did to your roses. They're snails, Dad. Of course they don't care. I'm going to burn my snails, Dad. It's a symbol. You know, good climax for your book. Shame for the snails to die for a symbol, but that's all they ever were. A symbol that spiralled out of control. Oh, blimey. Dad? Dad, can you hear me? Dad? Dad? I um, set fire to the shed and it went all down the street. Turns out that snail spray was a bit flammable. What are you doing here? 
Oh, nicking all them books. Your mum's pressing charges. Sorry. Ah, give me a chance to write up my notes. I should come clean. I'm doing a PhD on the English eccentric. That's why you pretended to like me. I'm your English eccentric. It was. And I met your parents. Oh, it's like the supermarket in here. Soap powder, cling film, cuddly toy. Oh. There was nothing I could do to help him. He was a thief through and through. I got hold of his mother's address. Why people live in those high-rises, I'll never know. But when I got to the door, I looked through the window, bracing myself, and I saw a Jackson Pollock print on the wall. Not framed. Still, I think that's what counts as a sign. Are you going to wake up and eat those grapes, Rose? Or shall I make a nice thing out of them? What do you want? I want to say sorry for spying on me. I was observing, like you did with your snails. They're snails. I'm a human being. Well, if you put it like that, I was expecting there to be something between us. A screen, but we could hold hands if we wanted. Yeah. Do you want to hold hands? Well, there. It wasn't so difficult, was it? What have you got in your hand? Don't look. Just take it. What is it? It's a tiny pair of sectors. I'm not going to get out of here with a pair of scissors. No, not for your escape. It's for the roses. I'll be back next week. One cutting, that's all I... That's why you came, yeah? Popped into the garden on your way in, did you? No, they, they wouldn't let me. What are they like? Is it true what they say? Alex? Bye, Dad. Mum was next, crying her eyes out. Not the emotion. They'd started strip-searching all my visitors after they found the secateurs. He'd finally arrived that morning. Been all round the world. My Potipopiagus antipodarum. Don't know where she'd hidden it. Don't really want to think about it. But from somewhere, my mum produced the only living snail in Bedley. Come on, Alex. Put your arse into it. I'm helping Gary out in the garden most days. Fresh air for me and Adam. Dad's solicitor reckons I'll get 12 months. So if Adam produces 80 eggs and those 80 eggs produce another 80 eggs and so on, there'll be a lot of snails in Bedley prison by the time I leave. So I'll have achieved something, won't I? Off you go, Adam. Go, where the greener grass grows. Go up those thorny branches and get that bloody rose. Good bit of alliteration, that, greener grass grows. At Home with the Snails was written by Gerard Foster and starred Geoffrey Palmer as George, Angela Thorne as Beverly, Gerard Foster as Alex and Miranda Hart as Rose, with Dave Lamb as Gary. The programme was produced by Jane Batu.